Coming up this week on Kings of the Wings podcast, we are done going all in, and now we're going to bash with a little bit of no mercy. AEW had their fun, and now it's time for WWE to set the stage in a completely different European country. Bash in Berlin is this weekend, and then we go back stateside for a little bit of NXT No Mercy, and you better believe in Joe Hendry. So sit back, relax, focus. Episode 387 of Kings of the Rings podcast exclusively here on Wrestling Radio, and it starts right now. Midnight music. Seriously, there are a lot of Waynes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, there are. I, I, there are. Yeah, I just, that, is, that is a stone cold fact. Yeah, that, there's 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 probably way too many of them. And I don't think all of them act actually, which is which is kind of a shame, actually. Anywho, folks, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings Podcast, episode number three hundred and eighty seven. Thank you all of you for joining us tonight. We are here live on uh no longer Twitter, I was gonna say Twitter, uh Facebook, um, freaking Twitch and YouTube, maybe Instagram in the not so distant future. Uh, thank you for all joining us. If you like what you're listening to or what you are seeing at this moment, including this dark chocolate face right here, please like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews, all of that fun stuff. Links to all of our merchandise and uh, social media are in the description below. With me, as always, a man who thinks ketchup is spicy. Will Tarashak, how are you? What? Who thinks ketchup is spicy? Nobody on this planet thinks ketchup is spicy. You'll be surprised. There are people that are that white. Yes. I don't even, honestly, I don't even like ketchup. There's some people put ketchup on mac and cheese, and those people deserve to be put in prison. Put hot sauce on mac and cheese. That's just just a fact. They're crazy. Some people put ketchup on their steak, which isn't the end of the world. I can get past it. It's not a good look, though. Mac and cheese? No bueno. No bueno, K. Murphy. No, it's gross. It is gross. How was your birthday, Kay? My birthday was so great. I went to see Avril Lavigne in Simple Plan in Connecticut the day after my birthday. Drove past WWE headquarters, which is pretty cool. How big is that new headquarters? I'm dying to know. So I drove past, I think, both of them. Okay. And it looks big. That's good. It looks really <laughs> big. It was. I've never seen it in person before because like, I don't go to Connecticut. Like I mean, I don't blame what, you. What's in what's in Connecticut, respectfully? WWE. But we have rich yes. white people. That's also true. Yeah, I, Bunch of rich white I'm people. Just great, white. And great pizza. No, uh, uh, well, I'll be the uh, judge of that. I no, live New in Haven. Queens. New Haven has, I don't New, need to New go Haven to Connecticut has some of the for best pizza. pizza. No, New Haven. I'm I'm not gonna shit on New Haven pizza. It's about the same quality, if not just a little bit better than New York pizza. That's a challenge. You know, a that lot is of a states say, I'm just saying, go, go there. It's a fact. Pizza. The pizza's incredible. Let's do KOTR live podcast in New Haven, Connecticut. <laughs> this is a pizza challenge. <laughs> it's like, it's it's the thin crust. And it's just, oh, it's excellent. Serious, it's excellent. The rest of Connecticut sucks, though. I fucking hate Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's a drive through 95 traffic state, go fuck yourself state. Yeah, oh, it's like Delaware. Show. Horrible. It was that bad? Traffic can be pretty vicious in Delaware. It took three hours to get there from Queens. Yeah. Yeah. That's Connecticut. Yeah. Sounds about it took right. Three hours to get there, but we had lawn seats, so we got to sit on the grass and it was I mean, really cool. I mean it's also it's also Queens though. Queens is a lot of traffic getting out of traffic. Did you, Queens, did you take yeah, the throng's neck? Throng's neck or I guess I wasn't the one driving. <laughs> did you go to the Bronx? Yes. Throng's neck probably. <laughs> from Queens. Did you go did you end up going into Brooklyn at any point during your trip? No. You took the throg snack. Okay. Now, <laughs> now that we've got that settled. Uh let's get in. I'm the passenger princess of my group of friends. So. Oh, you're that person. You just have no sense of direction, do you? I don't drive. So like You still have a sense of direction. I have a sense of direction in the sense where like like Liv will say like, oh, are you north or south? And I'm like, I don't fucking know where north or south is. I can tell you where I am based on landmark. Okay, you're a landmark. Or like muscle gotcha. memory. Yeah, I'm like a landmark or like muscle memory. But if you tell me to go north, it's game over. Yeah, okay. I do drive and I still have no sense of direction. <laughs> I just go, give me the address. Google Maps will get me there. 
the like fastest I, way possible. If I go somewhere like a few times, like I pick up pretty quick where I need to go. Like I'm not totally helpless, but like I just don't drive. So like, it's so bad. Like I don't know the name of bridges and shit. You'll get there. It's at, at some point you'll yeah. get there. Anyway, let's get on to this week. We've got a lot of interesting things to talk about from AEW and WWE, but unfortunately, we do have to start with this. Uh, Sid Udy. And Boris is here too, but yes, uh, Sid Udy. Uh, some of you guys might know him as Psycho Sid, Sid Justice, Sid Vicious. Uh, unfortunately, passed away at the ripe young age due to a so sad. yeah due to a long time uh, battle with cancer. Uh, one of the most imposing figures of the '90s wrestling scene, uh, multi-time world champion in WWE and WCW, and probably one of the crispest power bombs you've ever seen. I remember starting watching wrestling and Psycho Sid was like the big bad. And like, when you look at him, he's a huge dude. Like he is your prototype. This is what a big man in wrestling should look like. Mm -hmm. Athletic, Jack to the gills, lean and can throw down. Can't cut a promo worth a damn, but freaking everything else he was really freaking good at. And unfortunately we did uh, lose Sid uh, very, very, uh, young in comparison to stuff due to a long time battle with cancer. Everybody who talked about him said, even though he also was a former horseman in uh, in WCW as well. Uh, everybody who talked, I didn't know that he was. Yeah, D- WWE mentioned yeah. it in their um in their video package. Yeah, I saw that. That's where I learned. That's where I learned it. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. So um, he, although he was a terror, he was one of the nicest people. They uh, everybody said backstage, uh, a great guy from everybody who uh, who who mentioned him or talked about him. Um, Psycho Sid or Sid Vicious had a really, really bad injury from, uh, I learned this today, he had a really, really bad injury, like a leg injury, and then he came back years later on the Indies, and you know who the first person was that he powerbombed? There's video footage of this, too. It's going to blow your mind. Wait, what year? What year? I don't know the year. I just saw the video, but I don't know what year it was. Fuck. Um... Mm, he power bombs someone coming back from the Indies. I got to take a guess. For some reason, I'm gonna say Dean Ambrose on the Indies. No, it's actually a young Sami Zayn on the Indies. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was in the, I was in the right era. <laughs> oh four, Fred says it was oh four. So yeah, young Sami Zayn on the Indies. He power bombed the absolute crap out of. Uh, we had Arrow stream in the chat here saying Sid was such a nice human being. I met him a month ago. At Wrestling Universe for meet and greet and had stories. That's actually pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, my memories of Psycho Sid is him being like just this bad mofo. I totally forgot he went up against Hogan at WrestleMania eight, um, and he main evented with Taker at thirteen. That's the first Mania I remember, and Taker ended up beating him for for the world title at WrestleMania thirteen. But uh, yeah, no, Sid Vicious, Psycho Sid, master and ruler of the world. Anybody else have anything to say about Psycho Sid? Uh, his 96, 97 run. Uh, Rick, is my video frozen? You are frozen a little bit, actually. Yeah. All right. I'm not, I'm not frozen on the Skype call, so it's maybe I just disconnect my video and connect it back. Yeah. But uh, he, I liked his promos, to be honest. He just <laughs> screams at you. Sometimes they didn't make sense. Not at all. Bruce brought it back to, I am the master and the ruler <laughs> of the world. <laughs> he was always like dripping and sweaty and just wet and I was like, this is the guy I want to go out and get drunk with. He'll protect me. <laughs> That's a good point. And he's, he's the kind of guy he'd be like, you know, somehow when he says he's a better driver drunk than he is sober, I believe him. Kind of have to, right? <laughs> like, I, I, and his entrance, great music, and the fucking Sid that was on fire, the spark was that came down and lit up the ring. Yes. Was yes. one of the coolest things of the 90s. Him and Shawn Michaels had a great feud. Going into uh, Survivor Series '96, Rumble '97, and then eventually Sid had to take the title in for WrestleMania 13 when. Char- yeah. off of the year to go play softball. So, you guys love softball. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. 
It would be posthumously, yes. Yeah, no, I get it. It is, it is a very, very tough word. So, be it as it may, yeah, no, we lost Sid. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, very, 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 very young. So, rest in peace, Cycle Sid, the master and ruler of the world. Speaking of master and yeah, ruler okay, of the world. I think it's buffering. I don't think we lost it, but it's buffering. No, it's buffering. I'm okay. I'm You're good. You're back in. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. I'm watching it on my Twitch, and I just see the logo page, so I'm just like, oh. Uh, Twitch, my, no, no, we're back. Yeah, we're, we're back. back. It was a yeah. little bit little bit of a technical difficulty, but we are back and in, in full effect. Uh, anywho, so, AW All In was this past weekend, and I, I'll say, I'll say, it's a good job. It's a good job. It, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't the worst thing in the world. Like, it's not the exploding Bob Wire deathmatch. <laughs> Or anything, well, like, you know. But it, it was good. I was I was impressed. It's it's still ironic that John Moxley's on this cover of this of this thing, and he wasn't even on the show whatsoever. Neeper was Jay White. Um, but hey, hey, isn't Jay White injured, or am I mistaken? He might have been. I'm I'm not sure. I don't know. I I can't I can't keep up with the AEW roster. It changes all the freaking time. Uh, some highlights from AEW All In. Um, obviously, Tony Storm, timeless no more, lost to Mariah May. Um. You had some interesting things occur. Ricochet debuted. Cool. 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 Yeah, Ricochet debuted. We knew that was happening. You Very had good. the in ring shock return of Nigel McGuinness. Really? That's fucking crazy. To a yeah. unbelievable <laughs> pop. Yeah. It's crazy. They knew his song automatically. In ring return of <laughs> Nigel McGuinness. Um, what was his injury that put him out? It was something he said it in the documentary. It's like the same injury that Daniel that Brian Dennison lied about to get in WWE. Yeah, mm. yeah. He looked great though. He looked absolutely fantastic. Hook beat Jericho. Yay. Um, Darby <laughs> Allen lost the coffin match, and then the young bucks. Wow. The young bucks were going to set him on fire, and then Sting came back because you know he can't what? stay retired. Yeah, Sting came back. Cameo baby. <laughs> yeah, Sting cameo. Oh god. Grandpa. <laughs> Sting yep. came back. Uh Taz put somebody in a Taz mission, which is actually pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Who? Oh, so no cuz in FTW in the FTW championship match it was FTW rules, which means there are no rules cuz that's how Taz <laughs> did it. So it was like sure. pretty much Hook versus Jericho, Big Bill and Brian Keefe. And after a while, Taz is on commentary. He's like, there's only so much I can take. And so as Hook got Jericho into a Taz mission and one of Jericho's goons, Brian Keefe, was about to jump in, Taz got up and put him in the in the Taz mission. So you had dueling Taz missions, and that's how Hook won the title. It was a, it was a, cool, it was a cool spot. Good uh, for Hook. <laughs> yeah. Um, MJF and Will Ospreay had a great freaking match. Probably the match of the night. Be completely honest with you. I'm like so upset that I didn't get to see. I went to a Broadway show on Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. and I forgot. I like, I don't know. I didn't process when I bought the tickets that I bought a matinee ticket. I wanted to be home. Not in time knowing it's at one o'clock. <laughs> no, no, no. I fucking I knew it was at Wembley, but yeah. I like didn't think about it at the time. So I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna get matinee tickets to see Hades Town, have a grand old time, come home, watch this pay per view, <laughs> make dinner. It's gonna be great. And then I realized the paper started an hour before the show. Damn. Yeah. So I, I thought this one of the paper was on Saturday, but no, I guess it was on Sunday. <laughs> it's on Sunday. No, it's definitely on Sunday. Uh, I do have a couple of critiques. It's not anything about really the in-ring, because I think the in-ring was really good at AEW. For some reason, All In, even though it's their biggest show of the year, didn't feel big at all to me. Like, there was missing. Maybe it's because of they, from, like, Number one, the pacing, the match placement was what was what it was, and someone's gonna suffer. Like unfortunately, Mariah May and Tony Storm was were the, was the second match on the card. Mm. What? Yeah, second? that was second. That's crazy. That was second. That's a choice. I was like, whew. I was like, okay, yeah. They they went up after the London ladder match. <laughs> Why didn't the casino open the show? Because of because of what? Because I'll I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so okay. that, but I think well, from what our AEW correspondent Slack said uh, last week, they said Wembley has a really strong, like a really strict cutoff time for any events need to end. So like literally, like after a match was over, I felt like they didn't give that chance for the match to re All of a sudden, they are doing like a promo for the next match. 
Yeah. Like as people are well, walking back. It's like 12 matches. Don't overbook your card. Yeah, that too. My other thing was like, and so also when the show started, so like they did the entrances for the first match, which was the London ladder match on the pre-show. Then from the pre- then the pre-show cut off and then it was on the pay-per-view. So when you start the pay-per-view, there's no like massive video package. There's nothing like that. It's just boom, there's a match. We have a match going on right now. Oh, that's yeah. So like if you don't watch the pre-show, you just that's go awkward. into kind of chaos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, you, you cut. That sucks, actually. You know, and- was there pyro? No, it went straight to match. Like we are live. Here's a match. You know, that's what it was. I wonder how. I wonder how this show translated live. Like, I don't think we have Jermaine in the chat today, but I would love to know how this show translated live. I would. I would well, like to. Too. I, had, I, had a friend, I had a friend who was there. I'll let you know next week. I had a, we have we have a friend of a show who was also there as well. And I'm not talking about Jermaine. Mm-hmm. Um, she she came. She went. She went over there as well. Um, so yeah. So it went straight into a match, and I was thought that was kind of weird because you had no like pockets in. No like welcome to all in Wembley. No like not singing of like the UK national anthem. Like there was never that said. This is a big event. Oh God! Thank God it didn't sing the UK <laughs> national anthem, or whatever. But like, but there was nothing that said like, "Hey, this is a big event." Like Tony Khan came out, but he came yeah. out during the pre-show with with Martha Hart. But he came out during the pre-show, <laughs> you know. So, and my my other critique about it was, and maybe it was because of since they started like the sun was still out in in London and everything like you could still see pockets of where fans like they had a big crowd but when you go for like the wide shot and the big shot you can see especially yeah. during the day the pockets where like there are seats that weren't filled you know did they like block off or not sold there out? was it was not sold out from what I saw there was a lot blocked off because the stage was bigger as well like it was a rage stage and things like that. And my that my other critique is like the stage and stuff, they had some kind of production things, but the thing that kind of bothered me was that it didn't seem like it was a clean, especially because you were rushed with the matches. They didn't have time to like sign up, do like a, a visual stage reset. So for instance, Okada was part of a match and he had he did his Rainmaker thing and the freaking and his mm-hmm. and his bills came down and the bill stayed there for the rest of the show. Oh God! You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, WWE cleans so that shit messy. up before the next guy comes out. You know, MJF <laughs> had a massive entrance where he had like the American flag instead of a giant American flag come down from the canopy, um, and instead of the stars, he had he had his face in in the flag, um, pretty cool. which is t- pretty such cool. a dick move. But then, That's pretty cool. but then he also had these giant streamers that shot up in the air and they were hanging from the rafters, and so. For the rest of the time, those streamers were in every massive shot. That's so clunky. You know, like that that was kind of my better. thing. I was like, we can like we can clean this up a little bit. Like make it seem like you're an actual competition. But the the one thing that I that really kind of talk took me was the casino gauntlet. It's not the casino battle roll, it's the casino gauntlet. The winner of this match gets a guaranteed AEW World Championship. Match at any time, any place. Sound familiar? Because yes, it's like money in the bank. This is where they mm-hmm. get something a little bit different. It's a casino gauntlet. So they had 21 people do this gauntlet. No one knew who they were. Okay. The timed inter- So you started with two people. Every at at random intervals of time, someone else comes in. The only way to win this match is by pinfall. So it's the first person to get a pin wins the match so theoretically what? not everybody has to come out for the match to be over huh that's crazy but it had some great spots orange cassidy started the match and he did a mr bean entrance like the show mr bean the classic british show mr bean oh, that's funny. um and that's awesome and then he and then coming out after him was okada the third person was nigel okay. mcginnis you had uh, Mark. Mark Briscoe come out. You had Ricochet debut, Hangman Adam Page. Uh, pretty much everybody the Undisputed Era except for Bobby Fish and Adam and Adam Cole. Uh, so you have Roddy Strong, Kylo Riley. It's a good use of people that you don't really ever see. Um, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you're, raw, you're on the roster. Yeah, Zack Sabre Jr., fresh off winning the G1, was in the match, which is crazy. Oh. <laughs> he He actually looked really good in the match. Yeah, he's boring. <laughs> he's a he's a good wrestler, though. Yeah, he is he, he is boring, but he's a good wrestler. But he's in his he won the G one. He's the first ever. No, he's not the first. He's the fourth non Japanese wrestler ever to win the G one. So that is a pretty big deal. And so he's guaranteed mm-hmm. 
an IWGP Heavyweight Championship shot at any point in time that he wants, usually at Wrestle Kingdom, but he's actually pushing it to do it earlier. Um, so it was just, it was a wild match. You never knew who was going to come out. Claudio did win the IWGP Grand Prix in Mexico and then flew to England right after to do All In and do the opening match, which is yeah. absolutely wild. Um, but so did they tell you how many people are in the match? Twenty one. Like, twenty one. So it's so it's twenty one people. Mm -hmm. But there could be a pinfall before the tenth person comes out and the match is over. Correct. Yes. It's a royal. It's, it's, it's a royal rumble mixed with a money in the bank. I don't think you yeah. do it at all in. I think this is a double or nothing uh, kind of thing, which I kind of like as like the marquee thing for that event. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's, it's totally unpredictable. Theme. Yeah, it's it's totally unpredictable. You never know who's coming out. Like, no one expected Nigel McGuinness to come out at all. Yeah, and he looked great. He looked really, really good. So you had these. You had a lot of classic British wrestling. Like you had Nigel McGuinness go up against Zack Saber Jr., who are like two legends cool. of British wrestling going at each other, and they've never like locked before. So you had Okada versus. You had Okada versus Nigel McGuinness. You know, so it, it was a wild time. I really liked it. I think that's something they should really kind of push for and, and move towards. Ironically enough, Christian won the whole goddamn thing. What? <laughs> what the fuck do you mean Christian won? Yes, Christian. Cause Christian was in it? Yes. He was Christian Cage? <laughs> Christian Cage. Yeah. Yeah, this was after, this was after he was in the London ladder match. Okay, which they lost to Claudio, Pac, and uh, Wheeler Yuta. So, Blackpool Combat Club won the trios titles. Um, so, Christian came back out and looked like he was had no chance of winning. And then Luchasaurus was the last person. And Luchasaurus did all of Christian's bidding and chokeslammed whomever. Uh, and won and won the match and just pinned, put Christian on top of the guy who chokeslammed. And that's how Christian won. Okay, Ellsworth. <laughs> pretty much pretty much but otherwise all in was a pretty was a pretty interesting card like i said uh i'm still trying to figure out this gimmick like uh, do i like it or not you I have to watch it happen. you have to watch yeah. it yeah so it's like every three minutes every five minutes someone comes up random intervals they, they never told you the actual intervals mm. they give you a, did, did they give you a 10 count or is this a random they gave you a, they gave you a countdown from 10 okay okay so it had a rumble feel the, it had a rumble feel the, like the winner has a money in the bank kind of stipulation and you, know, you know that is that is it's a cool it is a cool concept it, especially in 2024 wrestling it's so hard to think of a gimmick or a concept that hasn't been done before yeah mm -hmm. so that that's working against them but uh yeah i i don't hate that yeah i think it, you can find it online obviously find the stream and just watch that match it's i loved it i was like this is kind of fucking cool it is how do you deal with like 15 people in the ring at once though so that's the only thing. So there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one downtime. So it's a lot yeah. of like, oh, I get knocked out of the ring so I can watch these two people go off against each other. Man, it's like yeah, running. I think I think a caveat could be if like over the top rope, you're eliminated, eliminated, but pinfall and the match is over. That could this be a good size, stipulation, yeah. Especially, especially with 21 mm -hmm. people. Like imagine if 21 people were had to play dead on ringside for like, <laughs> in the ring. Like it's just too. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like the 12 people in a ladder match. It's just too many bodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas, because the Rumble is like, like, and the Rumble is designed so you fill it up so Braun Sherman comes out and eliminates half the crowd so it makes, makes them look good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Whereas, if like, and it's pinfall at the end where it's like, well, you could have pinfall in the middle. I think that's like a very, very interesting concept. And you could have someone jump the gun, be like, I'm, a, I'm number 18. Fuck down, coming out of 15. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Curse acts, you're being beaten up. I'm getting in here. <laughs> so it, 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 leaves, it leaves some room for heel work. Um, Surprises, so yeah, I think it's a it's a start to a very interesting concept. Absolutely. So touche AEW. I wonder who came up with that idea. I don't know, but like I said, I really really enjoyed. It. I was like, I'll watch this all the time. It was it was really yeah. cool to see. It was yeah. absolutely really really cool uh, to see Young Bucks won again. So yay, there's that that happened as yeah. well. Um, so I heard they dressed as Sergeant Peppers, and it was so ugly. Yeah, it was it wasn't the, it wasn't their best look to be completely honest with you. Completely, it was it wasn't it wasn't great at all. But no, otherwise, absolutely great. So, oh yeah, Jamie Hader came back during the pre-show, which is something I should have done on the main show. But whatever. I did see that. Cool, good for that her. The, I knew she came back, but I didn't realize it was on the pre-show. So they had Soraya. They had they did a totally WWE thing that WWE would have done on the main show and not the pre-show. 
Soraya. Yeah, I saw her mom came back. Soraya came out with her entire family, with the entire Knight family, and she was essentially bitching and moaning about how she wasn't on the card this year, throwing a fit. This card is not gonna gonna continue until I get what I want. And then Jamie Hader came out to a massive pop, um, which I was like, why wasn't this on the main fucking show? <laughs> um, and Jamie Hader doing her best Becky Lynch cosplay because her hair is like fire orange. <laughs> <laughs> So, and it it was a cool moment. I was like, why wasn't this on the main show? This could have been a great breather in between your matches. Yeah. Well, you know. time. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> I'm assuming I'm assuming time. Yes. So. Uh, How was the Sasa match? Or Mercedes, excuse me, Mercedes. It was good. It was good. She did, she did a typical bougie Mercedes. Uh, she won, by the way. Uh, she did a typical. She came out with three corgis. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> she came out with three corgis and I missed the corgis and like on a, the paper and like a golden carriage that she that she wrote to uh, the Boris room. Boris would have lost his mind. <laughs> he would have. Yeah. I tell him every time we watch the pay per view that he's too cute to go. And now I can't tell him that. Yeah, no, it was it was he good. would have had zoomies all over the apartment. He would have. Yeah, he would have. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. Her and Brit Pager did really well. I felt uh, you know, I think this is press for time. They didn't give him too much time, but it was a good match. It was a good oh, match. Cool. Yeah, no, it was it was good. It was solid. So like and said, that picture of Brian Danielson bleeding out of his face. Oh with yeah, with the wedding. It's so it was cute. So hard. There was a really interesting moment. So he brought both of his children there, and Bree was there as well. So Brian I forgot he had two kids. Yeah, we all forget the second child. Um, <laughs> not gonna lie, because I don't remember Bernie. I'm glad it's not just me. I I forgot he had a second child too. So. Is part of his as part of Brian's video package. He, he it's pretty much a message to his children. He's like, no matter what happens, I'm always gonna choose you. You you mean more to me than wrestling. Blah blah blah. That's literally like the video package. So in the match, he's bleeding. He's pretty much getting his ass kicked. Like halfway through the match, like Swerve hits like seven house calls in a row. I was like, wow, he they're really doing the old yeller finish. Just just like killing. <laughs> so then Brian starts to like Hulk up. But he stops looking at Swerve. He turns to his children, blooded up. He's like, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. As he keeps on getting hit. Like, Interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he, he keeps on getting, like, he keeps on no sign more. It was an awesome, like, visual. Like, they told a great story. Absolutely great story in the match. I still wanted him to lose. <laughs> um, yeah, Swerve's trash talking seven year old, Mar and Mariah May slapped her mom on live TV on pay per view. <laughs> Mariah May, like slapped her own mother. Yeah, her mother is in the crowd because Mariah May was supposed to be the heel. She slapped the shit out of her mom though. Like it felt personal. <laughs> <laughs> it felt extremely personal. But like I said, the, the matches that were supposed to be good were really good, and they had good moments. This is a That's really good. solid pay per view. And so now we move on to next year, where All In is not going to be in London. It's going stateside in Texas and at Globe Life Field in Dallas, and that's going to be in July. On top of that, Forbidden Door is going to Wembley next year. And oh yeah, by the way, they announced that Grand Slam is finally a pay per view, except it's in Australia. <laughs> um, oh, that's <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> yes. AEW Grand Slam Australia is going to be the day after Valentine's Day, a.k.a. Single People Awareness Day. Um, February. Day before my 30th birthday, baby. <laughs> February wow. 15, 2025 at Suncorp Stadium in Australia. Uh, just announced over the weekend. So with that being said, that makes AEW going from one stadium show the last couple of years to four next year you have AEW and njpw wrestle dynasty in the tokyo dome the day after wrestle kingdom okay you have mm -hmm. grand slam in australia you have forbidden door in wembley and you have all in in texas four stadium shows next year for AEW. what do we think about that will tear shock oh that's excellent that is that is that is great news for AEW. That is a great uh, sign for their business. It is a great sign for the actual uh, wrestling business, not just AEW's mm -hmm. business. And it's it's a clear answer to WWE going to Europe, selling out stadiums all over the world. It's like okay, we can do that too. 
uh, at least going there. And I, I, it's, it's a very good sign for them. You know, it's going to be a big bargaining chip for their TV deal. Like, listen, man. Which I believe they have it, a deal already on the table. Yeah, it, is, it probably just needs to be finalized. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's like we are a legitimate real player. I feel like AEW over the past six months has gotten over the hump in the bad press of Tony Khan's a fucking idiot and look at no one at the arenas. Like, I don't see memes of empty arenas anymore. I think AEW has kind of gotten out of their slump and they're back kind of in full swing of things. Still a few things to tighten up, like as Ricky mentioned with like the production end. Yeah. But the fact of doing four arena shows, a stadium shows next year is gr- a great sign for their business. It's a great sign for the industry. And I'm happy for them as a company. That's that's good news all around for everybody. Yeah. Kefe, what are your thoughts? I selfishly am bummed that Grand Slam will not be in Queens next year. <laughs> However, I think it's like Will said, it's good news for everybody. It's really important to see professional wrestling like tour the world, not just America. And the fact that not just WWE is going international, but AEW is going international multiple times next year, that's fucking huge. And that's, like, really exciting. Good for them. Yeah, it, it is going to be interesting because even though we don't really see the memes about it and it's still kind of a running trope, they still, I think on Collision in particular, they still don't always do well uh, with with tickets for both shows. I'm not sure about Dynamite ticket sales. Um, but be it as it may, even WWE doesn't sell out all of their stadium shows. The only guaranteed sellout of a stadium, I think, year in and year out in all of pro wrestling, pro wrestling is WrestleMania. Yeah, you know, SummerSlam in Cleveland definitely did not sell out. They did. They did better than SummerSlam in Nashville. I will tell yeah. you that. But it, it yeah. wasn't a it wasn't a full stadium sellout. You know, um, compared to like other you know major shows. So there's that. I'm not sure about Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble does really well. Usually, um, even though they've done baseball fields for Royal Rumble, where where is it in twenty twenty? Was it Arizona? Arizona, yes. Yeah, that it looks huge in Arizona. Yeah, it looks mm-hmm. very good in Arizona. Yeah, not Arizona. Uh, it was Houston in twenty twenty. Sorry, was it Houston? It was Houston. Yes. Okay, whatever. Fucking uh, it was Houston. You're right. It was Houston. Um, yeah, like w- some stadiums look better than other. For some reason, uh, WWE does pretty good in baseball stadiums. They do, especially they, dome they, they stadiums. Look good. Like, yeah. Like when they did the when they did the rumble in Houston, like they made sure to close the roof. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But like when they do like half a football stadium like they did in Nashville, it looks a little funky. It did, but then they save it because they never show you they never show you the, the other side. Right, but but you know You know it's you know there's something missing. But you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, you know like there's half a stadium here that's just missing. Yeah. That's just like production crew. Whereas the baseball stadium, it's like, okay, they did the best they could with the dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like that works. Yeah. Like you know, you know, if like uh, they did it in Fenway, right? They would just make the the green monster like the the, the jumbotron. Honestly, I would love to see that. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right? This is like the biggest LED board ever for an entrance. Right? <laughs> It'd be really expensive, but they could do it. <laughs> I would, I would, I would travel to Boston for the first time to see that. Yeah, there's, there's a do- all of the Fenway Park though is I know very uncomfortable. I've heard. It's very uncomfortable because the seats are made for people that were alive in 1908. Yeah. <laughs> and people were very small in yes. 1908. Yeah, we didn't have preservatives in 1908. <laughs> so yeah. It, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, so AEW is doing, trying to do big things next year. It's going to be interesting to see how they go. I know for like, let's say like Australia, for example, because Wembley, they Australia doesn't get anything really big. Like their WrestleMania last year was Elimination Chamber or this year was Elimination Chamber. Now we're going to get a second major mm-hmm. pro wrestling show. Yeah, that's going to do really well. <laughs> you know? well. I wonder. I wonder what their audience is like. Do you think do you think uh, Australian fans are AEW marks? I honest. I honestly do don't know do you you think they even have access to the television so i found this out apparently espn in australia is going to start showing collision oh interesting yeah so it's a start so they might be getting more exposed to it as this comes up in six months from now yeah like they they could do another like Australia is big with tennis, right? Australian open is like a thing the the australian open is one of the four major tennis but i don't think they're big with tennis so they guess probably use like the, the ten, another tennis stadium. I don't know what the Suncorp Stadium is. I think I want to say it's rugby. 
Let me look it up. Yeah, I, it's literally right there. I'm a fucking idiot. I just googled it. Yeah, I like. I don't know what SunCorp Stadium is. It's probably like rugby. I maybe cricket, but I doubt it's cricket. Uh, Potentially Australian uh, rules football. Fifty-two-five seating capacity. Oh, it's a good. It's a good size. It's a good size for them. That's big. That's a good size for them. It's known as the Cauldron. Oh. Ooh, who wow. plays there though? Like who? Uh, who plays there? Uh, Brisbane Broncos. What team is that? What is the Brisbane Broncos? I have no idea. Rugby. Okay, it's a rugby stadium. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. that's gonna be that's good for them. So yeah, it's a big square. It's a big rectangle. Yeah. Okay. So that's mm-hmm. fine. So to do fifty-two-five as a seating capacity, they're gonna you're gonna lose depending on the stadium structure. You're gonna lose about a quarter of that. Oh God! It opened in nineteen fourteen. A lot of small seats in that around. <laughs> Unless it got oh. remodeled. Unless it got remodeled. So I can see them doing this. Should we call the phone number? It's listed. Do you want? To, no, I don't want to. Uh, I'm gonna say we're gonna do a <laughs> solid like. Fall? I'm gonna say they're gonna do if they do it well. They're gonna do a solid like forty. I think they're gonna do like it's gonna be like a forty thousand seat. Uh, All right. So the record attendance was fifty nine thousand one hundred eighty five in twenty twenty three. You want to guess who sold it out? Um, Taylor Swift. Mick Jagger. Not a bad Rolling guess. Stones. Who's who, who? Not a not a bad guess. Who's like the male <laughs> Taylor Swift? Harry Styles. Yeah. Ah, it's okay. It, okay. A little, little less famous. Ed, Ed Rest- Sheeran. Really? I'm, okay. not, I'm not surprised by that. Uh, so you think? Do you think AEW could break the record attendance of fifty nine thousand one hundred eighty five? No. 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 I don't think so either. <laughs> I think what was, what, what was the what was the working attendance of All In? Was never actually announced, which is interesting. Ah, smart. <laughs> so they definitely not smart, but <laughs> smart. If it wasn't good, smart. <laughs> It wasn't actually announced, so I, I, I don't know. But I think for this show, they'll do a solid 40. I can see them doing the 40,000 for this. That's a good number. Yeah, it's yeah. a good number for 40, them. 40,000 40, is a good number. If they, if they, anything over 38 in Texas is a good number. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what they do in Texas. And, Kay, do you want to go to Texas for all-in? To mid-July. What? It's in Dallas. Dallas. Right? July of next year? Yes. Probably not. <laughs> Okay. I have a wedding to save money for. Otherwise, I would. Let us know. I'm always just going down for yeah. the food because the food's fucking dope in Dallas. And I got friends. If I, happen, awesome to co- too, if I happen to come, if I happen to come into a windfall of cash between now and July, I will totally come to Texas. I, I mean, we're not sold on it yet, but I, 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 I'm considering it. I'm, it's, it's a thought. It's a thought of my mind. It sounds fun. This is a great time. Great food. A lot of very great artsy area. Um. And the food that I mentioned, the food, the food's freaking amazing. Food is one reason why I want to go to Texas. Food and music is kind and of and very easy to thing. travel. Actually, Texas, isn't, the city of Texas, isn't that big at all. Um, but yeah, there's that. Yo, same to Quan. <laughs> the brisket is really dope. Anyway, the brisket is incredible. <laughs> yeah, let's move on uh, to the reason for the season this weekend. Uh, WWE is holding their one of their. I think their first ever PLE in Germany bash in Berlin. When it is, it is right. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they mm-hmm. had they had a, they had a TV taping. They did Raw there in the nineties. In ninety seven, it yeah. was the debut of the European title, Bulldog versus Owen. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. It was in like March or April ninety seven. That explains why maybe uh, May. That explains why Natty did the video package promoting like how. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Big that's thing. Why. So yeah, no. Bulldogs. It's good. So yeah. yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty it's actually a pretty freaking decent card, all things considered, especially the top of the card yet again. So let's kick this off a little bit of prediction. First one, obviously, adrenaline in and so something something. Cody Rhodes putting his title up the line against a <sighs> semi reluctant Kevin Owens. How he's like, I don't want to do this, and then he kind of got like reverse psychology into <laughs> into having this match. Um all things considered, I still think Cody gets this. Like, I think this is just somebody that is being fed to Cody to make sure that his stock stays high. And kind of, to be honest with you, this is kind of what Kevin Owens' role has been in the last couple of years. How many times was he fed to Roman? Yeah, yeah. he had a lot of title shots. We knew he wasn't going to win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he made them entertaining. Like, didn't Roman run him over with a golf cart? Oh, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> no, remember the last man standing match where Paul couldn't unlock the handcuffs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were all like, I think Roman lost. <laughs> no, 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 because Roman, Roman was literally like on his feet, like crouched like this. <laughs> he, he was cuffed. <laughs> he was like, he was like, in a squ- he was squatting. Yeah. 
And Michael Cole's like, well, his feet are on the ground. He's up. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to save it. Trying to save it. But yeah, no, I just, I just think it's interesting. It's there. Cody's built as the, you know, this is built as the top match because it's Cody and it's a WWE championship and he's Cody Rhodes. They even, you know, they're, they're selling a Cody Rhodes, like nightmare logo with the German flag colors on it as well at the, in their superstore for that, for this weekend. Um, this isn't as big as a story as the other world championship match we're going to get to in a moment. So I just think this is cut and dry. This is a, this is Cody. I don't think anyone thinks Cody's going to lose respectfully. No, nah, I don't think so either. No, this match is just Cody needs to be on the card. We have nothing for him. What can he do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, we got to have the German people sing well. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, I, th- I think an issue WWE is having overall at these European shows is they're just glorified house shows. For the most, like with a few stories intertwined here and there, mm-hmm. like France, right? Cody, Cody, AJ, there was a story there, but it wasn't, mm-hmm. it was like a quick thing, one and done. There's a one off. Hell of a match, though. Hell of a match. Not every, but not everything has to be long term storytelling. We love long term storytelling, but not every match needs that. Absolutely. But it's just, yeah, this, this is a very much a house show main event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be fun. I'm, it's going to, it's going to, it's all going to kind of really, uh, be on how well because Cody's gonna do his thing, but Kevin Owens mm. has to be kind of a big character here. Is he gonna be the bad guys? Is it gonna be like a friendly, or is he go- is he actually gonna turn into like Prize Spider Kevin again and actually try to go for it? So we'll definitely see what happens here. But I think this is a, this is a clean sweep for Cody Rhodes. Now to what should be the main event. I don't know if it actually is going to be, but it should be Gunther being an amazing heel going up against. Randy Orton, the guy that Gunther kind of actually didn't beat at King of the Ring, as <laughs> as they've kind of established that his shoulder was up, even though it was blatantly obvious that his shoulder was up. Um, this this is the pay per view, right? This is the PLE right here. Um, Gunther's heel work is phenomenal. He is such a massive European snob now. It is amazing. Yeah, he's see. like kind of turning into the aristocrat Triple H. <laughs> what Triple H was supposed yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah. Like Hunter, the original Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yeah. Just kind of like more refined. And Randy's like, yeah, I used to be a dick like you, but now I'm not anymore. And Gunther's just like, yeah, your family was, your family was poor too. Randy was just like, dude, you grew up in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're talking about poor. <laughs> Eastern Europe is a definition of poor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He saw, I know he started ramping up going against Randy's uh, Randy's dad and his lineage and, and all and all of Randy's mistakes and things like that. And the other storyline here is that Randy could be going for number, what is it, 15? 15. 15. Tied with John, right? No, he'd be one behind John. No, that would be 16. Yeah. Yeah. And Randy, Randy cut a great promo being like he was the youngest person to ever have his name etched on the world title. And he wants his name etched on the world title again. It was a, it was a, it was a surprisingly really good babyface promo by Randy Orton. Yeah, <laughs> he tried. Really good. He tried. It's better than. I believe. I, I believe it. it. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. So th- this is interesting. Like, uh, this is a, this is a good match. that a good match about King of the Ring. With that being said, it's Gunther. In Germany. <laughs> Dis- Can I just say, mm-hmm. after those German fans we saw at WrestleMania, you took the words I'm out so of my fu- mouth. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so scared. Scared. <laughs> scared, dude. <laughs> I'm terrified. I am. Absolutely- the Blitzkrieg is coming. <laughs> this is going to be the most serious pay per view I've ever seen in my whole life. It's. I'm so terrified of what this entrance is gonna look like, but I'm so excited to see what this entrance is gonna look like. Um, I just, I even though it's Randy and Randy does wild shit for his age, I don't think you beat Gunther in Germany. No, no absolutely not. <laughs> ne- negative chance. Yeah, I just, I don't see it happening at all whatsoever. Like, good luck to you. Like, Randy's gonna put on a great match, but I think, I think this is gonna be a hard hitting match too. Yeah, he's gonna like you know he's not like worked that hard selling. Right, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah, it's really gonna hurt Randy. <laughs> so yeah, no, I think Gunther Gunther on a clean sweep. So yeah, to the most interesting match of I don't know where this is gonna go, but I have an idea. The strap match, Drew 
player hater of the year behind Kendrick Lamar versus <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah versus CM Punk in the feud that goes on and on and on and on. So just to reiterate, the strap match stipulation, as WWE puts it, is also similar to what WWE used to call a full four corners match. And we're pretty much putting them together. So they're tied to a strap. They're tied to a strap. And you have to hit all four corners of the ring post in succession in order for you to win the match. So it's a four corners and a strap match put together. And we're calling it a strap match. Uh, extremely gimmicky. <laughs> um, I wonder if they're going to have the lights that they used to do for four corners matches where like... they. They might, or it'd be a graphic. Or a graphic or something like that, just to kind of visually cue. Yeah, I can't cue. remember, because the last one they did was, I think, was Drew and... Who was it? They had a grass saw a meme of it the other day, but I don't remember who it was. That might have been the last one. It was Drew and someone else. And Drew lost that one, too. Um, yeah. Uh, Punk did it versus one. I don't, I don't dislike strap matches. I just hate the four corners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like... It's anticlimactic. It's like anticlimactic, and the selling is just like it's hard to sell it properly. It's gonna be like, and like, ah! <laughs> it's, just, it's just like you know, it's just, it's like, and what constitutes like a clean break? Yeah, and it always ends the same way. Like they tap, and they don't know that someone's behind them. They kick them in the nuts, and they tap the fourth one, and it's over, right? So, whereas I think this blood feud, it's just like the the gimmick is should be. You can't run away from me. We are tied together. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. I'm going to whip the fuck out of you with a leather strap. Which is exactly what happened on Monday. And that's enough. Yeah. That's enough for this match. You don't like why have the four corners? It makes no sense for the overall story. It makes no sense for the gimmick. It kind of makes no sense for the match either. Something weird's gonna happen. Something's going. Someone's gonna be conniving and find a way out of this. And I think the conniving person is gonna be CM Punk. CM Punk's so conniving. He went live on Instagram while he was under the oh, ring on Monday. I, I need to speak about. I that did for see a that. Second. I was like, speak that's on it, Kay, Please. I need to hear your perspective I, as a CM Punk mark. Okay, so I was like watching Raw live last night, and then I drew speaking. And then I got a push notification on my Instagram to <laughs> invite me to CM Punk Live. And I'm like, why the fuck? And like, I don't get notifications for lives very ever, really. Okay. But okay. I got a push notification to my phone about a CM Punk Live. And I'm like, okay, this is clearly for me. So I go in the live and I see CM Punk's in the fucking dark. So I like text, I have a, another wrestling group chat. So I text them and I'm like, I just got sent to the CM Punk live on Instagram. <laughs> he's in the dark. I think he's under the ring. Sure enough, <laughs> he was Instagram living from under the ring. <laughs> I love Punk. Punk's just Punk's just doing Punk's just finding a way to keep himself interesting. <laughs> and I love it. Also, unrelated, like quick side yeah. This CM Punk graphic, what is this hair? He's not his hair's not that dark anymore. He's very gray. Listen, computers. <laughs> computers, what are you gonna do? Uh, he's like a shade AI below man. What can we say? Yeah, right? no, that hair color was like a shade below 2007 CM Punk. <laughs> Listen, it happens sometimes. I, I will say this. I think this is all leading to something, even though I forgot this paper PLE existed, but October's bad blood. Bad blood. And like Will said. I- the gimmick they want them in the cell that's what i would think too because the strap someone's gonna find their way out of a strap like we'll say the strap match will be you can't get away from me somehow someone's gonna get away and screw up the strap match and eventually adam pierce is like all right you guys can't stop running away from each other i'm gonna lock you in a cell yeah that's what it has to lead to it has to lead to drew and punk bad blood hell in a cell um and that's why i think punk's gonna win because Drew beat him at SummerSlam. I agree. I, I agree. Uh, but also, do you think there's going to be two cell matches on Bad Blood? Because I could also see Liv and Rhea in a Hell in a that Cell. That would be fun. I think would, would also <laughs> be work. But also, because it's like, it is Bad Blood, but do you want two Hell in a Cell matches from the Raw brand? And no. do you want one from SmackDown? 
But where where could you put one on SmackDown? There's no blood feuds in SmackDown other than like Roman and Solo. But I don't see that happening yet because that's gonna be War Games allegedly. Yeah. So you you don't want to have two two cage matches with Bloodline back to back. I think that of the two feuds that would be like a blood feud that would be most that would be deserving of a Hell in a Cell. The one that I think is more deserving is Punk and Drew just to longevity. It's been going on since post Rumble. Yeah. Since pre, since pre Rumble, well, yeah, that too, <laughs> you know. Pretty much just the day CM Punk signed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. So, Drew McIntyre has been like fuck Punk since day one. Yeah, like almost as worse as almost worse than Seth. Uh, so yeah, I think if you're gonna do one, which I think the smart move is to do one, and since like Bad Blood has always been a B tier pay per view, um, you have this main event Hell in a Cell, Drew and Punk. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agreed. You know, yeah. you can. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to pump with this one too, because this 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 kind of match is, it it fits his character style mm-hmm. to win. And Judas mm-hmm. gets mad, be like, "Oh, you piece of shit!" Yeah. So it all. You're gonna ramp it up all of September because I do not believe there is a September PLE to my knowledge. Um, and then bad because bad blood's early October, like the first Saturday in October is bad blood. Uh, I can't reach my mouse. Let me find yeah. it. So I think. I think you're right. Yeah, I think there's like because they doubled up in August. And so I think there's nothing in September. I want to say so, because I think after because you have Bad Blood and then there's Crown Jewel and then Survivor Series and that's it. All right, we got uh, No Mercy September. Yeah, no, no September. Yeah, well, yeah, technically it's NXT September 1st. Yeah. And then Bad Blood is October 5th. Halloween Havoc is the 27th. Crown Jewel is in November. Oh, they got they got two in November. So November 2nd is Crown yeah. Jewel. And November 3rd Survivor is Survivor Series, Series War yep. Games. I mean, that's it. Yep. Yeah, right. that, that, that makes sense. So, yeah, I put Punk and Drew here. Especially mm-hmm. if you're building Survivor Series up to be something bigger. I put Punk and Drew, main event, Hell in a Cell, Bad Blood. Punk has to win this, though. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen with that. Moving on to who likes tag team matches and who likes mixed tag team matches. You have uh, pretty much the Team Rocket of Liv Morgan and Tom Mysterio. <laughs> team <laughs> That's Rocket. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally what they are at this point. Versus the self-proclaimed Terra Twins and Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Uh, this has shenanigans written all over it. I don't even know who wins. I just know it's going to be wildly entertaining um, in some way, shape, or form. Dom Mysterio, even though I know he's a heel, he's becoming one of my favorite people to listen to on an interview. Uh, especially what he did to Logan Paul several weeks ago. Oh my god, it was so funny. Did you hear did you hear about this, Will? No, I I, I did see uh in an interview they debated having him um hanging above with Eddie and Ray instead of a contract, like a briefcase <laughs> <in the> custody. <laughs> no, so he was on impulsive. Obviously, and he they were just shooting the custody of a child will be determined in a match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he was on impulsive and he was just talking about I think WWE had recently done a tour of Japan and he's like, oh, man, Japan's awesome. I loved it being there. And he's like and he goes, look, he goes, Logan, you should go to Japan. You can still <laughs> you can still go. Right. <laughs> 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 He was like, how come you weren't on our tour? And Logan was like, I, I had other plans. He's like, I can still go to Japan. He's like, Dom goes, I just wanted to know. I didn't know if you were like shadow banned or something. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was shadow banned, but he's definitely not shadow banned. <laughs> I, thought he is, I thought he's banned from Japan for his life. Maybe it was a temp thing, but according to him, he was allowed to go. I don't know. It was a really uncomfortable yet absolutely hysterical moment. That and <laughs> Dom didn't let it go either. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. it was really good. It's funny because you know Dom watched. Dom was like a fan of Logan Paul. Like, <laughs> Probably growing up. <laughs> <laughs> he watched him on Vine. <laughs> was, oh my god! Or something like that. So yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with this, but something tells me that Dom and Liv are going to sneak the sneak their way into a win here. No, I just I disagree. Uh, Rhea Rhea is going to pin Liv. I agree. Because you need you need you need a reason to set up their one on one match. Okay. Especially since Rhea Liv already pinned her, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I think this is 
it's a baby. It's a baby face card, right? Cody's gonna win. Gunther's gonna win. Even he's supposed to be a heel. Oh, he's a face in Germany, right? Punk's yeah. gonna win, and I think Rhea Pri- and Priest are gonna win because you need to continue that story. Like, if Dom and Liv sneak one out, how do you justify Rhea getting another one-on-one match? And if if that, because you know it's not where the story's not gonna end there. No, mm-hmm. right? So. I'm sure uh, Judgment Day gets involved. Finn comes out. So you could have shenanigans there. But you could have uh, Finn come out and then they run off Priest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we, I don't know. I don't know. All I don't know. know for sure is JD, <laughs> JD McDonough is going to take a really wild bump for no reason. Yep. For some reason, yeah. they him getting, getting ripped tatted was pretty awesome. For some reason, they hate JD McDonough. Do you know how many bad things happened to JD <laughs> McDonough since like Survivor Series? Remember, he a took lot. like the super RKO when Randy came back? Yeah. <laughs> like JD McDonough is the new Bollywood boys. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> <Did you> just <snort? laughs> yeah. <laughs> JD McDonough just takes the biggest bums for no reason. I'm like, why are we doing this to you? <laughs> maybe he likes it. He's like, maybe I'll take it. Someone's gotta do it. I'll do it. Man, he is taking Spike Dudley bums. You are totally right to Quan. <laughs> Absolutely, totally right. So yeah, this is a toss up. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do with this. And also, I don't, I don't know when Rhea and Liv actually fight. Is it Survivor Series or is it the Rumble? I can see Rhea and Liv at Rumble, real easily. You think they stretch it out that long? I don't know. I think that's too who, long. Who does Liv defend for for for, for the rest of Q four? I mean, who is she? Who is We're she? Def- Q3, Rick. Who's who is she defended outside of Rhea? Nobody. That's why she's in Judgment Day because she has no one to work with. Yeah. Who's available? She beat Zelina. Zelina's injured. No, Zelina just came back. And she beat Becky. Be- that was it. And Becky's not. That Becky hasn't resigned yet. Yeah, Oscar's out, right? Oscar's, Oscar's out. out. Oscar's injured. They're and they're doing tag team stuff. Dakota Kai's like, injured. They- uh, the, I feel like you would want to pull someone out of the tag teams. Like yeah, the the someone... women's division has been focusing on tag teams. On Raw, at least. And then Nia's pretty much the healthiest woman in uh, as a champion. Yeah, and Nia's just doing shenanigans with uh, Tiffy. And, well, she's going against Meechin. Yes, which she I like looked, that Meechin story. looks great. She looks fantastic. She looks great. Yeah. They're doing a pretty decent job of building her up. They gave her a good video package. She looks great. Mm-hmm. Gave her a good promo. Mm-hmm. Um. And pretty deadly is, I think, is hilarious. That fashion is. I finally is like them. They're so funny. It took because they did a musical for Rhea. Uh, not for Rhea for uh, for, it's, for, for Nia. Nia. Yeah. It took me what two years to like. Them. I love Pretty Deadly. They're so ridiculous. They're good with <laughs> Tiffany Stratton. They so. are. They're they're mm-hmm. a, they're a good group of just like idiots to Nia's like seriousness. Not Nia's a good straight man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It plays well. It just at least until Charlotte comes back. Exactly. Which I think is eminent. Yeah, because she's like, I'll bitch oh, on the God. Yeah. started. Wait, what show? Happens. Charlotte's on SmackDown? Oh, yeah, she's going yeah. to SmackDown. You better believe it. Uh, we don't know when Charlotte's back. Uh, I'm assuming. I bet you Charlotte returns on the first SmackDown on USA Network. Yeah. September, September 13th. Yeah. 13th. Which, there's, there's no rush for Charlotte. Sure. Not right now, no. Yeah. Um, did you see what uh, Naomi, I know we're going to go complete sideburn here, Naomi, Jade and Bianca did the three oh, the stages S- of Simone Biles. Simone Biles, that was freaking awesome. Yeah, I thought it was really good. And Jade, Jade looked really good in that tag match. Yeah, I know last week we had mm-hmm. a big sidebar about Jade being bad, but uh, she looked really good last week. Yeah, no, and Bianca Belair showing up on a, on literally Bel Air of a TV show on Peacock, which is going to be awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, oh, cool. Is. Yeah, it is really cool. Watch Bel Air, folks. It's great. That's not a shameless plug. That's actually just a plug. Uh, but moving on to speaking of Bianca and Jade, essentially the final matchup we have so far on the card, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if Michin and Nia somehow slip into this card as well. But the final match officially that we have thus far uh, at the time of this recording is uh, Isla Dawn, Alba Fire putting their tag team titles on the line in a rematch against Bianca and jade again this can go anywhere depending on where they want to push the story do you want to keep alba and isla kind of holding on to these tag titles and doing whatever the hell they want or do you have bianca and jade get these titles again and do kind of a story reset with them and honestly i don't know but i think if we're going to push bianca and jade in some sort of story of them working together um i think is the think the story should be can they work together even though for some reason they keep fucking losing when it matters, which is something that Bianca's not used to. Um, and so I think of, with that, you keep the titles on Alba and Isla. 
Oh, God, I don't know. It's a tough um, one to call. I totally, mm-hmm. I totally don't care about women's tag team wrestling in general. I usually fast forward, but if it's, if it's Jade, I'll watch because I like Jade. Um, I think they need the belts, which is a weird thing to say because no one ever needs women's tag team title belts. But I think they do need the belts because you. I think you need to do a little more massaging of Jade and getting her a little more ready for a single mm-hmm. push. Because, like, she looked great last week doing those big spots coming for that hot tag. And I think they're actually doing what Slack said they should do last week, where on the house shows they have her kind of do the more learn-to-wrestle kind of thing, mm-hmm. and on TV to do the big spots until she's ready, ready. So I think a tag team title was, was a good spot for them both to be in, and it gives them a reason to break up later on. Yeah. Um, you gave the tag p- touts to uh, the other two because there was their hometown, nice nice moment, and because Drew wasn't winning. Or was that what they, they were in Scotland? Scotland? Yeah, that was Clash yeah, of the Castle. Drew wasn't winning. Clash of the Castle, right? Because Punk Punk screwed Drew. Was gonna win, so we'll give, yeah, we'll give we'll give you a constant. One of the greatest surprise, screw jobs ever. Right. So I think it's a reset. Give it back to Bianca and Jade, unless this is where they do the breakup, which I think doesn't really. I think make it's sense. premature to break them up now. Exactly. I agree. So. I think you you got to give them a reason to break up later, and the tag belts is a reason yeah, to do you that. You can break them up by Rumble. I think is the Rumble season the perfect time for mm-hmm. the breakup. Yeah, yeah, and then they do a, then they do a, a, a Mania storyline, and then Jade's off mm-hmm. to the races. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Kayfabe, what you got? I feel the same way. I feel that Bianca and Jade will take the titles back in Berlin because I don't want to see them splinter based off of a storyline that they keep fucking losing. I feel mm. like that doesn't make Bianca or Jade look that great, especially if you're trying to build Jade up. Like having them break up because they keep losing kind of makes Jade look like a shitty wrestler. So let them win. And like, I don't know. I can see them splintering more so, kind of like, you know, like competitive, like girl shit. Like, yeah, like, wim- <laughs> like, like women, like, women are very competitive. Like, even though they're probably having a fab time like working with each other and learning from each other, they're still competing against each other. Like, mm-hmm. And I think that will break them up. So like, put it back on them. Let that kind of slowly kind of kind of like one of those like spider cracks on your phone Ooh. where you crack it and then they it slowly will crack. Have Give it one of that. That way they break up at Rumble. Have them fight and then go at Mania. Kind of like what they're what they're hinting at with Xavier and Kofi, yeah. Like slowly, just like crack and crack and crack. And the fact that Bianca Belair is gonna be on Belair should have signaled to me that they're probably gonna win the titles back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but but we'll see what happens with that. But so far, that's pretty much literally that's all of Bash in Berlin. We could end the show right now. <laughs> that is all of Bash in Berlin. They, I think they need. They was at four matches for four uh, or five. We technically are at. Let me double check. It's five. I love five matches. Yeah. Like so I said, much. I wouldn't be surprised if Naya and Michin get slipped into there, but I don't think it'll happen, but it's a possibility. Yeah. But I, mean, I think five's good I for think, this. I think five's good, but I think you could slip them in there. Yeah. It depends on how much time they want to give some of these other matches. Like I think Gunther and Randy are going to get a hell of a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, L.A. Knight just defended, so he's got nothing. The IC titles in a current current um, they're doing a in the transitional tournament. stage. Yeah, yeah, and then the tag titles. Who gives a shit? Yeah, they're really. kind of in limbo, right? Both of them are actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Who's this? Oh, yeah, the, the bloodline. Yeah, bloodline's not on this card at all. Nothing, nothing at all, which is fine. Surprising. Surprising, but fine. But what, 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 what would yeah, you do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? You're still you're still doing the Roman yeah. stuff. Um, How are other stories? The bloodline can afford to miss a pay per view. Yeah, yeah, that or for some reason one of the Usos is banned from Germany for some weird reason. Oh, that too. <laughs> could, could, could also be a possibility as well. Um, it's a big possibility. But with that being, so- Jacob's like, I got a warrant there. Can't go. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> Can't go. <laughs> 
It's also a very strong possibility. Jacob Fatu had some wild times way back when. Uh, but be it as it may, with the five card, with the five matches that we have on this card, how well do we think this will be in crowns? One being the worst, ten being the greatest thing of all time. Uh, K Fabe, you'll go first. I'll give it like an eight. I think it'll be good. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, Terra yeah. Shock. Um, seven and a half. Yeah. 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 It's it pre it's predictable, pre predictably fun with a few like, oh, this could happen. What can yeah. happen here? I think that's good. I'm going to give it a half. And the crowd, the, and the, and the crowd, the crowd response is probably going to push it to an eight, eight and a half a, next week. So stay tuned. Yeah, I have a find feeling out. this crowd is going to be, this, all of us is solely going to be waiting on Gunther. Yeah. They're going to be scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think this is all going to be on Gunther. For this. I'm going to give it an 8, which is the same thing I gave, which is the same thing my final score is for All In. And All In probably would have been higher if their production was a little bit better. They cleaned up some shit. But I'm going to go with a solid 8 here. So it's going to be interesting if a 5 WWE match card can score the same as a 12, a 12 match AEW match uh, pay per view. It's going to be very interesting to see. See if WWE does more with essentially less matches. Uh, speaking of more, NXT is putting on No Mercy for the second time as one of their new annual pay per views. This is not going to be in Europe. It's going to be in Denver, Colorado, <laughs> actually, uh, which is when Raw is also going to emanate from the Denver area uh, as well. So, God, heaven help the people who are coming from Germany just to Denver to do <laughs> Raw. Like, that's going to suck. That's <laughs> Thing. Good thing it's on a Saturday, but still, that's gonna suck travel wise. <laughs> um, a lot of the, like half of the roster is already in Germany, anyways. Um, but NXT No Mercy is putting on uh, their one of their PLEs, uh, which is going to be an interesting card, especially because for the first time ever, a TNA contracted superstar is going for the NXT championship. All Eagle Ethan Page is defending the title against, I believe, nice. in Joe Hendry. Um, the big question is, would WWE actually do this? And technically, even though Joe Hendry's contract with with WWE is absolutely out of control, bonkers, um, he can pretty essentially, from what I've heard, he can come and go as he pleases. Like Indies, wow. TNA, NXT, like yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't, he has something totally unique from anybody else who's ever been contracted with WWE. The big question is, would they actually do? It's like Joe Hendry is hot <laughs> right now. Well, dude, like, let, me, let me put it this way. At at um, Fanatics Fest yeah. last week, or two weeks ago yeah. at this point, um, they had the entrance thing. For Joe Hendry. Right, you get to come out with your own entrance. I saw Joe Hendry entrances from fans multiple yeah. times. People are I not... didn't see one Ethan Page. <laughs> not one. Yeah. Zero. If you ask fans, hey, do you know who Ethan Page is? They go, who the fuck? You, what? Do you know who Joe Hendry is? Yeah, the guy goes... <laughs> yeah, I know him. <laughs> so yeah, it is a hundred percent possible he wins this title. A hundred percent. Will he? I don't know. Probably not. <sighs> it, mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with Ethan Page because he's more WWE's prototype. Yeah. Um, with what you would want. A great heel. And they showed him on. They, and they showed him on TV. He's a great heel. Him and Roxanne. Ethan Ethan Page so. is like fantastic. His heel work is being absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go with Ethan Page, and what's what's if he's a good heel, there's no better way to get over a heel than dominating a top baby face. Yeah. That's true. I just it'd be so interesting if WWE pulled this trigger because remember they had this tease before when you had Jordan Grace go for the NXT title. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I mean you ha you had the she Dana lost. Brooke fake out. Yeah, <laughs> yep. you know. Um, so do they do that same thing twice? It'd be interesting because I think Ethan Page is so good of a heel that him losing, him freaking out that he lost to Joe Hendry is an, is, could be, also be a great story to tell as well. Like my, also, my thing is you have No Mercy, and then you have Halloween Havoc going in October. Would it hurt anybody for Joe Hendry to run around with the NXT title for like a month and a half? Not at all. No, not at all. You know, I think this could be a, a thing that, that can happen. Um... And sometimes you got to strike when the iron's hot. Like, Ethan Page is still going to be a good heel with or without the title. I think it makes him even a better heel if he loses the title because it'll make him go crazier. So, I, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go a little wild. I think you do a shock here. I think Joe Henry wins the NXT Championship. 
Okay. I also I wouldn't be mad. I also think Joe Hendry is winning the the, w, the NXT championship. Yeah. I, I feel like this is great timing for it. Like mm-hmm. I feel that if they're trying to really show that their partnership or whatever they're doing with TNA right now is strong. They're not going to let all the TNA champs that are or TNA talent going for championships lose. Eventually, they're going to have to put someone over. I think Joe Hendry's the perfect one to put over. He's so like hot right now, and I think it should be him. Yeah, I mean, they've NXT has done more for TNA than AEW did for TNA when they had a partnership. I forgot they had a partnership. I know that's how little AEW did for them. Because you know what AEW did is AEW took all their t- <laughs> titles. Kenny Omega had like three world titles at one point at the same time. One of them was a t- he did yeah. do that, didn't he? Yeah. Um. And so I think, like like Kay said, to to further this kind of partnership, all you have to do is have a TNA person win an NXT title once, and you've totally shocked you've totally shocked all of pro wrestling. That WWE allowed a, a technically a non contract non contracted person to win one of their titles. You sh- you you send shockwaves. It shakes everything up. And, when- and I feel like it being sorry. To be no, careful. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was saying like it being like a not originally in WWE like talent. Like yeah, say like the Hardy Boys are in TNA right now. Like. Having the Hardy Boys win the NXT champion, Tag Team Championships would not mean as much as Joe Henry winning the NXT Championship because he's yeah, new, definitely. he's up and coming, he's on the rise. Mm-hmm. Like He's, he's hot, yeah. hot. He's like Hansel, he's so hot right now. Zoolander reference. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but also, when you think about it as well, NXT's going to public TV in less than two months. They're going to the CW. Yeah. SmackDown's coming to usa in two weeks you know there's a lot of transition september september 13th is smackdown's first uh friday the 13th is smackdown's first uh show on usa for the first time in a very very long time so there's a lot of transition happening so because like even though that's going to make a lot of news there's going to be a lot of tv changes but they're a big news for nxt you're going to live tv cm punk's going to be on the first episode you know and now you have joe hendry as your nxt champion going into that first show It'd be a pretty wild scene. Absolutely wild scene. By the way, also to note, apparently they have announced, this is kind of a sideburn, Michael Cole and Corey Graves are moving to SmackDown when the transition happens. Yes, I saw. Which means Joe Tessitore is going to be on Raw with somebody else. And then when... Interesting. And then I think when football ends, it's going to switch. Pat's going to come back when in Pat January. Back. Yeah. And that Tessitore guy will go to SmackDown. Yeah, so there's a, there are announcer transitions as well. So I don't know who Joe Tessitore's uh, color commentator is going to be. Probably Wade. Yes, it is Wade. It's Wade? Okay. Mm-hmm. Wade's not bad at color. I like Wade. I like Wade. He's fun. Yeah, I like I I do like Wade. Him and Corey are really good mm-hmm. together. I mean, it's with the commentary booth, it all it all depends on the chemistry of the commentators. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, and, and... It really does. Like, Michael Cole is good with pretty much mm-hmm. anybody. Mm-hmm. At this point, because he's such a pro. Yeah. But, like, if if Vinny and Wade don't have chemistry, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, I, you know, and it was it was cool to see Corey back in his hero role again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I see true love in the ring, Cole. What are you talking about? He was trying to do Jay Uso's entrance, and he had no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> and then he figured it out, and he was like, "Oh, what was that?" <laughs> 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 So yeah, but yeah, I I think this is the this is the weekend I believe in Joe Hendry. Yeah. Someone has to. I'm actually gonna watch an NXT event for this. Oh wow! So Probably late, but it's also because it's Labor Day weekend, so none of us, most of us, aren't working on Monday as well. Yeah, well, I never work Monday. Well, there you go. We're all watching. Let's do a giant watch party, guys. I'll do it on Discord. Uh, moving on, on to- Monday. No, for uh, for No Mercy, it's on Sunday. Well, I have plans on Sunday, and I don't know if it'll be home in time. Oh. Uh, is September, September 1st is on yeah, it's Sunday? August, yeah, because yeah, yes, August it is. 31st is Saturday. You're right, you're right. Yep, Yep. that is true. All right, so moving on. Uh, NXT Women's Championship, Roxanne Perez versus Jada Parker. Jada Parker won a gauntlet match. Um, you call her Miss Parker for respect. Uh, she's up and coming. She's 
she is great. She's mighty thick. I'll tell you right that. I'll tell you right now. Uh, but for some reason, somehow Roxanne beats this, beats Jada Parker because I don't think Jada Parker's ready yet, and they're just feeding somebody to Roxanne until Gulia comes around or Stephanie Baker. Gulia just finished her runs in Shimmer, so she should she should be coming back to America very very soon. And I think Stephanie Baker has some visa problems, uh, so she's delayed a little bit. But Roxanne's holding this until either Gulia or Stephanie Baker comes and beats her. Roxanne's still a yeah, heel? Yeah, she's still a heel. Hell yeah, look at her. Cute as a button. She's not losing shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. she's retaining. Yeah, we're going, yeah, Roxanne, full sweep here. But an interesting match that just got announced from last week's NXT, the Don Tony D is going to try to uh, go up against Oba Femi. And I, and I really feel so bad for Tony D'Angelo. Dude, his pitch looks like he doesn't want to be in this match. Look at him. He's like, I got a what? Although, although, he did lift up Oba Femi and hit him with a massive spine buster. And I was very Props impressed. Him, I was like, oh, oh, okay. He's got that Southern Italian strength. <laughs> that Sicilian That's strength. Yeah. Um... Listen, as long as Obafemi has his belt, I'll never bet against this man. I've seen what he's done to people half Tony D'Angelo. Agreed. Side. Same. Dude, if I ever meet Tony D'Angelo, I'll go to him and be like, hey, I heard you I heard you think ketchup spicy. <laughs> as an Italian, what do you think? <laughs> that marinara sauce got too much spice. Imagine think marinara sauce is spicy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've seen Obafemi carry two men the same size as him on his shoulders like it was nothing. I saw him throw Wesley in a helicopter like spin halfway across the ring at Heat Wave. <laughs> okay. Obafemi's a scary man. Especially he's because he's huge. Very scary. And he's not in he's not in wrestling shape yet. That's the scariest part about him. He looks like a he looks like a spy, a Marvel villain. Look at him. <laughs> he looks like Umbaku's like older brother, but no one talks about. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we don't talk about Oba. <laughs> you know, he's that. Good. For some reason, he's not allowed in Japan either. And they're not allowed to disclose it. <laughs> so yeah, Oba Femi was an absolute clean sweep. And the last match so far on this card, uh, a rematch of the NXT Tag Titles, Chase You, everybody's favorite fake college. Not prick are you? Um, <laughs> versus Axiom and Seth Rollins Jr. Nate Fraser because Nate Fraser got trained by Seth Rollins. He also literally stole all of Seth's move set. <laughs> God, you know how they have like the college football t- titles? They need a Chase U title. Oh my God, <laughs> yes! I would buy that so quickly. <laughs> yeah, people would buy that, dude. People would. Well, you know buy they it. did. Um, so in storyline and Chase U several months ago, um. Andre Chase, like, was caught in a gambling scandal, and he lost all the money of Chase U. And so in order to get Chase U up and running again, they sold NXT, uh, an NXT calendar with all the NXT women on it. And they l- they incredible. literally <laughs> sold it. They literally sold it on the shop and sold out in a day. And then they and then in storyline, they got all their money back in the universe. Was, they got all the, the money back. was saved. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Happy ending. Oh, that's 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 good family fun. That's good family fun. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I need. I mean, they just came up with Chase U jerseys, like basketball jerseys. Cute. You know. Um. Either way, Fraser, Axiom, uh, Andre Chase, and Rich Holland, who's actually doing something positive and not injuring people. <laughs> um, they have they've had a really good series of matches together. Like their tag team matches are absolutely insane. Uh, I expect this to probably open up the show because they're just really that fun together. Um, and I think they run, I think Chase U keeps this. Just because I have a thing for Chase U and I think they're freaking awesome. And they're like very gimmicky of the gimmicky things in NXT, but they're really fun. Like they have their own student section. Didn't they, didn't they win the belts from this team, Axiom? They won them a couple weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, they, were they won them a couple weeks yeah, ago. Won- Axiom and Fraser had a rematch with them, non title, and they beat them last week. And so it's essentially the rubber. So I think Chase U retains. Agreed. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, K, if you still frequently watched um, NXT, you would like Chase U. Would I? Oh, yeah. They're just a fake. They're literally Who just... are they like? Thea Hale. Huh? 
Thea Hale. So she is literally, so the Thea Hale storyline, I'll tell you this right now. She was a signee for WWE. She was like pretty much like 18, 19 and, and got TV time on NXT. And the whole thing was like, I'm going to college and my decision is I'm going to join Chase U. So she became this young blonde. She's like 5'2". All the energy of the world. It's like it's like having a toddler on having like three pixie sticks all the time. She's always oh my God. <laughs> she's Jesus. always so running around and yelling and just she's not even twenty one yet in real life and she's always running around and just like losing her mind. Then she had her bad girl era for a while. Um, and was dressing in all black and and hung out with like J C Jane and Gigi Dolan uh, for a bit. And then she's like, I'm not really a bad girl, you know. I'm I need to go back with Chase. She had her she had her fake little love interest in college. Uh, for, for for a couple of months with another boy at school, and now she's like the heart and soul of Chase U. She wow, did have she did she did have an emo phase. That's actually very true, Fred. She did exactly <laughs> have an emo phase. <laughs> She'd come to the ring in all black and be very just like condescending to everybody. Love that. <laughs> just, so I think you would like My the hell. My favorite is Andre Chase because he's just totally ridiculous. So Kay, you know who Andre Chase is, right? No. Do you remember? He Do you remember Hall and Bravado? Yeah. That's Andre Chase. That's him. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I hated him on the Indies. I love him as Andre Chase. He was very despicable <laughs> He's such on the a Indies. Dick. He's such a dick. He's such a dick on the Indies. <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs> He's such a dick. But I, I think uh I think Andre Chase is in Chase you're actually freaking awesome. He has a great character here. And he always wears Jordans, which I found out. He always wears his sneakers. Cute. Yes. Anyway, that's all we have for NXT No Mercy. NXT, like I said, another match that might be on NXT, but they did not say uh, as of right now because we have four so far for NXT. The other NXT match that might happen is Wesley versus Zachary Wentz because a couple of weeks ago, Wesley turned on the Rascals. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Wesley turned on the Rascals. He was like, you guys love me. You love me alone. <laughs> Screw that's you guys. Drama. Yeah, he was very dramatic. Um, Wentz versus Zach is booked, so uh, that's going to be interesting. So yes, Wesley versus Zach Wentz, the former Rascals, and go up against each other at NXT No Mercy as well. They had a face off tonight because NXT is going on right now. So we'll do that one real quick. Wentz versus Wesley versus Zach Wentz, the two former MSK tag team partners. Obviously, Zach Wentz got released due to some drama um, involving his former like fiance, which she, which Kimberly, I believe her name was, which she ended up, I think, admitting to kind of fibbing some of it and costing him a lot of shit. But now he is back and he turned on, uh, on, uh, they came back, they joined MSK and wrestled together with Ben Wesley turned on Zach one. So that is the final match on this card. So real quick, who do we got? Wesley or Zach once? Oh man. Wesley. I just, like the name, I just like the name Wesley. That's yeah. literally why I am also picking Wesley. <laughs> yeah. Another Weasley. I always oh my feel like God. My, I always <laughs> get the NXT predictions. I have no stakes in these matches almost ever. Yeah, I'm, I don't like NXT anymore. I'm so I just go. guess on what sounds good. Guessing is good. Um, and we're going to talk about something really interesting on the post show, too. That potentially might be happening with NXT. Building... Dude does have heat in the NXT crowd. All right, I'll go with Wesley as well, because I don't think Zach wants to stay around no matter what. So, yeah, we're going to go with Wesley uh. with that. So, with that being said, with five official car, five official matches on the NXT card, so it was 10 altogether. Again, combined, not as many matches as AEW all in. <laughs> so, between NXT and, and Bash in Berlin. But how well do we think the NXT No Mercy card is going to be? Real quick, Will Tarashuk. Yeah, seven. I always give NXT a nice college seven. Say <laughs> nice college seven. Nice college All seven. Right. As someone that didn't graduate college, what does that mean? It's like, it's like, you know, like you know the old college try. Well, what's the college seven? Like seven what? It means it's like I don't know. I just made it. I just think I, I just made it just up. Make it up, yeah. Oh, I'm like, wow, I feel really uneducated right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid by any means, but I'm like, damn. Let me see if I let me see if I just completely stole you that with my Google machine. Kids, yeah, you just put in like players. put in like Urban Dictionary at College Seven. College <laughs> Seven, no regular seven year medical program. That's definitely <laughs> what I'm talking about. Uh, for me, I'm gonna give it. Uh, let me see. There's not a lot of stakes on this card, but there's a lot of good matches. Although Zach Wentz and Wesley 
are is the heart and soul of this whole no mercy thing. Um what do you think? I think they're I think both shows are gonna be an eight. Solid eights. Like I don't think NXT No Mercy is gonna be better than Heat Wave. I'll put it at that. Um so I think in Heat Wave was like an eight point five nine for me. Eight point five nine was great. So yeah, I'm gonna go oh, with wow. a solid eight for No Mercy. You should watch Heat Wave, okay? You'd love it. That's when like, is Heat Wave? It heat happened wa- already. Heat Wave already happened. It was in July. Yeah. Okay. During the heat it was wave. yeah. It was Money in the Bank weekend during a heat wave. <laughs> oh, well, I hate heat, but I'll check it out on the yeah. Peacock it's gonna be ninety five tomorrow. I'm gonna fucking die. Yeah, don't remind me. Oh yeah, we we are technically about to be into another heat wave. God fucking damn it. Fuck. I was literally just life. when I was in fucking Connecticut. I had to wear a hoodie during almost the entire concert. It was so nice to be cold, and that ended so fast. Oh, yeah, it was fun while it lasted, right, Kay? Uh, Thursday's going to be 75, 76. It's going to be a nice weekend. It's going to be 80s this weekend. Good thing for college football, baby. Okay, but I want, like, 70 and below. You got to wait. fall weather. You, you gotta I'm, wait. like, ready. You got to wait a couple more weeks for that. Couple, oh. couple more weeks for that. So with that being said, folks, we are completely finished with this show this week. Good job, guys. I'm proud of you all. Uh, Hell, yeah. So, yeah. And then next week... We gotta go back to AEW because all out's happening. I don't, think I, can do it. I don't think I can stand another Slack show. <laughs> you can't. You wait. I enjoyed the Slack show more than you did. I mean, he was good. It was fun. <laughs> Last week was fun. Or maybe we'll find another AEW correspondent. We wait, are we doing AEW next week or the following week? Next week is all out. Okay. Yes. I em- emanating live from be- Chicago. Surprise, surprise. I'll do my best to be there. Get fucking Slack on. Yeah, we'll we'll get our, or we'll get another AEW correspondent because I got plenty. I'm trying to get the one of uh one of our friends of a show who was who was at All In to to be to return for the show. Okay. So then well, we can get we can get some good insight about All In and then give you know their predictions for All Out and whatnot. Well, if they're busy, get Slack and I'll get my Freckles plushie out of my closet. He's. I will tell you right now, Kay. He's still mad about freckles. I know. I listened to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the bait of his existence. <laughs> also, <laughs> when I logged into Animal Crossing for my birthday, freckles for the fourth year in a row threw me my birthday party. Wow. Freckles is a great fucking friend. She really is. Freckles is an absolute great fucking friend. But that being said, mm-hmm. let's get this show on the road. Will Tarashock, if you may, sir. And I'll keep him brief. I can't. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 387. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Don't roll your eyes on me well. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast. Like, share, subscribe across all social media. Links to all of our stuff are in the description below. If you are listening to us, please make sure you're listening to us on Wrestle Attic Radio to Cure. For the Common Wrestling Podcast and follow Wrestle Attic Radio socials at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Attic Radio, all one word, everywhere else. Will Tarasov, you can now roll your eyes. Dude, the biggest news we didn't talk about in all of professional sports is that Backyard backyard Sports is coming back. Oh my God, Backyard Baseball is coming back. Pablo Sanchez, baby. Is coming back and I, for one, am throwing my hat in the ring. Literally, because I want backyard wrestling. I want <laughs> backyard wrestling so bad. I want Pablo Sanchez versus John Cena in a ladder match. It'll probably better right? than AEW's video game. Let's make it happen. Let's start a petition. Backyard sports, backyard wrestling. God, I think that would be incredible. K. K. Murphy, other than Pablo Sanchez, who is the greatest backyard athlete of all time? The answer is Pablo Sanchez. I don't remember other, everyone. Other than Pablo. That's the thing. I don't remember anyone's name besides Pablo Sanchez. Okay, you can say Pablo Sanchez then. Pablo Sanchez. I, the answer I'm, is Ernie Steele. Well, I'm old. I haven't played backyard <laughs> baseball in like 25 years. I probably played it like a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I was probably in the fifth grade the last time I played backyard baseball. You can find it online for free. It's just like, it's, it's just like a web app. You just play it. It's fun. Oh, yeah. that's good to know. It is coming back. So, yes. Anything else, Kayfabe? No. 
you can find me on social media and by social media, just Instagram and TikTok that I don't post on at K underscore Fabe, K A E underscore F A B E. Word, word, word. So when we come back next week, folks, we're probably going to have an AEW correspondent of some sort, whatever, Slack, or someone more important uh, than Slack, which isn't actually isn't really that hard to find. Uh, but Because <laughs> we have to go all out and finally be done with AEW until uh, something else happens that's going to make us say either wow or what the <laughs> fuck, Tony. Um, wow. Or what wow. the fuck, Tony. Either or. So until next week, folks, we'll see you for our all-out preview show. Goodbye. Good night. And fuck you, Slack. Yay. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.